Samhain, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, All Saints and All Songs. It's the same time of year, but so many different names in different traditions. And the inevitable, you nick my festival arguments between pagans and Christians. So what's really going on here? Why is this time so special to both of our paths? Mike Steigel asked me to record this because I bring a particular perspective that comes from having my feet in several camps. In my actual day job, I'm a Church of England parish priest. I'm also one of the founders of the Forest Church Movement, launched for anyone who feels more spiritual outside than inside, which is, I guess, something that we all share. I'm also a Christian pagan interfaith practitioner and author of The Shaken Path, a book that I wrote to try and correct the Daily Mail, Daily Telegraph type of all pagans are evil devil worshippers notion that it's all too often swallowed hook, line and sinker by the church. I guess that combination of different hats gives me a useful perspective when we start to consider all of the festivals that seem to fall at this time of year. But first, we might wonder why we share this date. Well, the truth of it is we share a lot of our dates and no one can really claim to have first dibs on them. Although it ought to be clear to us, generations of being an industrialised nation has helped blind us to an obvious reality that any agrarian society would take for granted. That people whose spiritual practices and indeed whole lives are focused on working with the land will be affected by the seasons, by the solar calendar. The only reason that the vast majority of people in Western society don't realise this is because their lives insulate them from this truth. Many of our different religions began in agriculturally based societies. And it's for that reason that once you start digging, you find that many religious festivals are founded around the solar calendar. It shouldn't surprise us to find, for example, near the end of December we have Christmas, Yule, Saturnalia and so on because they all fall near the winter solstice. So important was this to early societies that at least some of the stone circles of our heritage were constructed in such a way as to take account of solar and lunar alignments, with the winter solstice appearing to be of particular importance. This history explains why Christmas is on what would have been presumed to be on or about the winter solstice. If you're going to celebrate the birth of divine light into the world, it just kind of made sense to celebrate it when the days have reached their darkness. Many forest churches also follow the same solar calendar of meeting at or near the quarters and cross quarters as most pagans do, because there's something special about those times as the year progresses from one stage to the next. All of which brings us to Samhain, Summer's End, where we are now, and once again, it's no surprise that it's found its way into both pagan and Christian practice, because we're at a cross-quarter point, around midway between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. So we're marking the time when all the harvesting is done and the darker part of the year is upon us. We also have Halloween on the 31st of October, which means the Eve of All Hallows or the Eve of All Saints, because Hallow and Saint are basically the same word, meaning someone who is regarded as particularly holy. All Saints then follows on November the 1st. That's followed on November the 2nd by All Souls, which is the ch- in the Church of England. That's the day when we remember the dead. And there is a common theme in all of these. We may be at the end of summer, and it may have once been a time to mark the end of all the all the harvesting, and it's quite possible that it marks the day when cattle are brought in from the fields for winter. But all of us are focusing on the dead. Why? What's the common factor here? How come pagan and Christian have the same theme for this, this time of year? We might even ask, who did it first and who nicked the idea? My suggestion is that neither of us came up with it first. But our different beliefs beliefs have influenced the direction in which we've gone. This season is a good time to remember the dead because, quite simply, the leaves are dropping or have dropped their leaves. The growing season has ended and the plant world is entering dormancy as the trees draw their energy back into their roots. It basically looks as if nature is dying. Now, of course, we know that isn't the truth, but so many rituals are based around what we observe 
Hence, many of our spring rituals being ways of pleading with a higher power for a good growing season and fertility of the land. So the reason we're both focusing on the dead is simply because that's what it looks like in the natural world. Adding to that the darker evenings and the longer nights, and our portion of the world is being bathed ever deeper in mystery. And for many of us, death is the greatest mystery of them all. What then happens from a Christian perspective? Well, that depends on who you ask. You will doubtless have encountered some churches who refuse to engage with any of these ideas and instead have light parties under the mistaken belief that any of what I've described is evil. But I think it's also a way of people trying to avoid the reality of death. We're all going to die. This season offers us a chance to engage with it. Now, the two Christian festivals of All Saints and All Souls have a different focus. All Saints will often have a focus on what the author of the biblical letter to the Hebrews refers to as a great cloud of witnesses. You can find that in chapter 12 if you want to read it. These are, if you like, the spiritual superstars or superheroes of the past in the Judeo-Christian traditions, the ones who stand in the presence of God. Now, some years ago, my wife Alison and I visited a Greek Orthodox chapel in Cyprus. And in common with many Orthodox churches, the walls and much of the ceiling were covered in icons of these saints, mirroring this idea of the cloud of witnesses. But it wasn't a sense of disapproval. This was one of the most peace-filled spaces I have ever entered. It's St Neophytus if you're ever in Cyprus and want to visit. Now it was almost like we were surrounded by cheerleaders. Alison wanted to call it the Church of the Holy Friends. There was that sense of encouragement that they'd been here, they'd lived through lives often more turbulent than ours, and they'd come out of the other side where they still cared for us, still prayed for us, still wanted to cheer us on. And it's hard to speak about it without tearing up. And that is what All Saints is about. All Souls is where we remember our dead. And this is one of the key tradition differences between our traditions. In mainstream Christianity, we don't attempt to contact the dead. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, most of which would need another video to explain. But at least the part of the story is that we don't have an agreement on where they are. Some Christians believe they lie sleeping, awaking a coming, resurrection, a coming resurrection. Some believe they are in heaven and cannot be engaged with because of the current separation between the heavens and the earthly planes. And others believe in an intermediate state, a conscious resting in paradise where they are aware and pray for us, awaiting the final resurrection. Whatever. We leave them be, but we remember them as our ancestors who've helped shape our lives and who we uh, who shaped our lives and who we've become and many churches will read out the names of the dead that we gather to remember for some it's a special time to grieve since we all know that grief can be suspended by circumstance and space is needed for it it's a psycho spiritual essential and all souls is intended to provide that space but then as an outlier there's forest church which is a, lo a loose network of groups around the country who follow a Christ-centred path, but do so outside around the solar calendar. Samhain and All Souls is special for us too. Our group meets as day turns to night around a fire. We embrace the mystery of the transition out of this life, and we also want to remember our dead. Our practice, started at ancient Arden Forest Church and continued now at Wuben Forest Church, is to make soup together as a part of our gathering. We set a fire with a large iron pot and everyone brings vegetables. We go around the gathered circle and each person is given the opportunity to say something about the person or the people they wish to remember. We place our chopped up vegetables into the pot as we do this. And then we let the soup become whatever it will be. It's always different. It's always delicious. And once made, we share the soup in what is for us a deeply sacramental act, where a sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward grace. In eating of the soup together, so we are taking both our memories and the memories of the gathered community into our bodies, making those memories a part of ourselves as we celebrate our ancestors together, 
and recognise that our community looks the way it does because of those who went ahead of us through life and beyond the veil. This then is a very broad brushstroke overview of some of the Christian traditions. There are similarities because we live under the same sun. We are affected by the same seasons. So it should be no surprise to us that there are some commonalities. <laughs>